Yo, what is up you guys? It is Jay the Green. Welcome back to another combat sports related video here today. And since we are approaching the end of 2020 very quickly, ladies and gentlemen, I had to bring you MMA's fighting top 10 fighters of 2020 brought to you by MMA on the go. Shout out to them. Um, you know, it's been a crazy year for sports and a crazy year for the world at large. So let's react to this video. If you're new and you mess with the content, you know, think about showing some love and your love is greatly appreciated. Hit that like button. Turn on those, you know, turn on notifications. And most importantly, hit that sub button, become part of the family. Because once you do, you're part of it forever. But let's not waste any more time. Screen. Let's see what this list has to say. With COVID causing constant cancellations and rendering a whole heap of matchups infeasible, many martial artists struggle to see action at all, much less distinguish themselves from their compatriots. Still, a few managed to pull it off, so join us as we check out 2020's top 10 fighters of the year. Number 10, Charles Oliveira. Charles Oliveira has long been one of the most underrated fighters on the UFC. He just beat Tony Ferguson. My opinion on that is that it's due to his issues with the scale when he was a featherweight. But since moving back to 155 pounds, no one can deny the emergence of Dubronx, and in 2020, it was back-to-back -back big wins for the Brazilian, who turned back Kevin Lee and Tony Ferguson in a year to remember. Oh, he beat Kevin Lee, that's Number right. Number 9, Gilbert Burns. Another fighter who could have been sitting on top of this list with a championship belt around his waist is Gilbert Burns, who parlayed impressive wins over Damian Maya and Tyron Woodley this year into a shot at Kamaru Usman's welterweight. He makes the list, I suppose. Now waiting for a rescheduled date with he dominated um, Tyron Woodley, man, badly. Of kicking off 2021 by winning a title. Should be a good fight between Number him and Ruzman, man. Brandon good fight. Moreno. Brandon Moreno nearly took the top spot this year after a pair of wins over Jussier Formiga and Brandon Roybal was topped by an epic five-round draw with flyweight champion Davidson Figueredo in December. A win would have made history for the assassin baby. That was a good fight. He would have become the first Mexican to and UFC Brandon. gold. But I'm sure Moreno will be back in the title mix in 2021. Tough he has dude, to man. Have Tough a rematch dude. with Figueredo. Number seven, Jan Blacko, which from two and four to start his UFC career, it didn't look like Jan Blacko, which was going to one day wear a championship belt around his waist. But after he that, he surprised me, man. Out of nowhere, this guy beats Dominic, beats the shit out of Dominic Reyes, and becomes a champion. Very impressive stuff. And a September Powerful of dude, man. Reyes that earned him the vacant I think he's gotten better with age, round. honestly. His, age, his skills have aged like fine wine. You know, it's pretty damn good. Number six, Israel Adesanya. He should be higher, in my opinion. Tell you what kind of year twenty twenty. Top three. He's a killer. Killer. Scary challengers and is at the number six spot. That's probably due to his tactical win over Yoel Romero in March, which didn't exactly set the world on fire. But hey, it does take two to tango. And once September rolled exactly. around, the man on the cover of EA Sports UFC Four video game put on a video game s performance in halting previously unbeaten Paulo Costa less than two rounds. Super impressive. He killed. He. Before we put on the display video, of excellence, enjoyed this content, like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the notifications bell. To get go and find them, man. Go and find MMA on the go. Go check them out. They got good Number stuff. Five, Chaos Williams. Although he suffered his first octagon defeat at UFC Vegas 17, Chaos Williams lived up to his first name in his first year with the company on super short notice. I'm not very familiar with this guy, Alex to be Bruno, honest. Who had won his previous three fights in his promotional debut at UFC 247. Williams put Morono away in just 27 seconds to pick up his first UFC win and earn a performance bonus. It took nine months for Williams to make his sophomore appearance, but he left a lasting impression when he faced fellow knockout artist Abdul Razak Alassan at UFC Vegas 14. A right hand landed 30 seconds into the fight and nice. Williams was once again standing in the winner's circle with an extra $50,000 in his bank account. Number 4, Joaquin Buckley. Sure, the August Octagon debut of Joaquin I'll give my thoughts on him after. He, he had the best knockout of the year, though. No question. put a stamp on 2020? After his knockout loss to Holland at UFC Vegas 6, New Monza made his sophomore UFC appearance on Fight Island against an undefeated prospect in Impa Kasangane. The spinning back kick he pulled off that night will be shown in every highlight reel until the end of time, and it was the winner for him. It was brilliant, man, the way he the landed that. The finish also made Buckley the most discussed story of the week despite an incredible KO by Corey Sandhagen against Marlon Morris in the main event right. of that card. Sandhagen's a beast. Oh, this guy definitely should be high up, yeah. His short notice octagon debut to his potential title eliminator, 
This guy won like three fights in like two months or something like that. Something ridiculous like that. He's a monster. He has the goods. Um, I think he's supposed to fight Leon Edwards very soon. I am looking forward to that. It's a good test to see if he belongs to the top dogs, you know? We'll find out. In one of the Very good fighter, though. Be kidding me moments of the year. Shimaev was standing over a knocked out Mearstart just 17 seconds and one punch into the co main event of UFC Vegas 11. That was Number impressive. Two, Kevin Holland. Holland managed to go 5 to 0 in 2020. While that number is impressive on its own, people forget that four of his wins, starting with a knockout of Joaquin Buckley, happened between August 8 and December 12. As fun as Holland has been throughout yep. the year, he yeah, became a legitimate threat to the middleweight title when he knocked out Ronaldo Jacare Souza at UFC 256. While the year-end award season may end with a, a lot of things of to come for medals, this, you know, young man, he's a beast. Holland he's a beast. 2021. Whether he ends the year with 10 fights under his belt or possibly gets a title shot, either seems impossible. The number one spot goes to Davidson Figueredo. It wasn't too long I, I think I agree with that one. He's a killer. UFC's flyweight division was He's a killer. Thing of the past. But fast forward, and as 2021 approaches, the 125 pounders are in a better position. He's an exciting than flyweight, you know. The, the flyweight division needs and the some excitement these days, you know. Brazil's Davidson Figueredo has That's a just the reality. The class Not a lot of casuals want to see flyweights go at it. Beginning the year with this guy has the goods. Joseph Benavidez that would have earned him the vacant flyweight crown if he had made weight for the February bout. Figueredo instead got his belt five months later by finishing Benavidez a second time. Then came a first round submission of Alex Perez, and Figueredo ended the year with a fight of the year draw with Brandon Moreno. Well done, Mr. F. Well done. All right, there you guys have it. Now, to get my thoughts on that list, I would have Israel higher, definitely. I know he had a boring performance against Yoel Romero, but, you know, most of that's on Yoel's shoulders, the fault, that, you know, that goes there. He didn't want the belt, so he didn't get it. Um, but he dominated against Costa, who was the scariest guy in the division at the time. I would have him top three, in my opinion. He's a monster. Uh, Figueredo is up there, man. He probably does deserve number one. He's a killer. Had a hell of a fight with Brandon. Um, you know, beat Benavides twice. Who's was one of the best flyweights of all time. Um, well, Keen Buckley should be a little lower. I know he had the hell of a knockout, but he did lose to Kevin Holland. Knocked out, I believe he was, like they said, by Kevin Holland. Um, but he belongs on the list, but I'd have him lower because, you know, the impact of what he accomplished with that knockout was huge. So he definitely was one of the top fighters this year. Uh, who else was on there? Um, Kamzat Shimaev, I think so how you say his name. The guy's a beast. He's one of the best fi top fighters this year. He's dominated everyone he's fought. You know, he's a beast. And like I said, he will be facing Leon Edwards, I believe so. And that's going to be the biggest te the biggest test to date for him. Um, it's been a hell of a year for the UFC. Um, let's thank God and let's thank Dana White for being the basically the reason why sports continued in this you know COVID pandemic. It's it's a damn shame that it that the pandemic came to be, but thanks to Dana White, sports has survived. NFL, NBA, you know the the MLB. And yeah, there's been some hiccups with COVID and, and the NBA and, and the NFL. But things are slowly getting back to normal. You know, I'd say this year is is right now, the end of the year is definitely better than the middle, for sure. You know, it was tough for all of us out there. You know, we all need something to inspire us. And the UFC has done so, for me at least personally. And um, like I said, I thank Dana White. Thank God. I thank all the fighters. All the fighters out there that fight in these tough times, having to go through all these quarantine bullshit protocols, you know, they have to do what they have to do to stay safe. You know, it's, it's a pain in the ass. It's it's bullshit that COVID is a thing. You know, it sucks, but that's the world we live in right now. And, um, but my top three, I'll, I'll go Davidson Figueredo, Israel, Kamzat. Those are the top three fighters to me, the most impressive, the most dominant, and the future of this, uh, the sport. Um, but yeah, guys, I think it's going to wrap it up. Uh, shout out to MMA on the go. Let me know if you agree with the list or disagree with me or with the list, whatever. If you have any recommendations, please leave them in the comments. And like I said before, if you're new and you enjoyed the content, please hit that sub button, become part of the family. So once you do, you're part of it forever. And for all of you, uh, hit that like button, hit that bell button, stay up to date with yours truly. And uh, happy holidays, guys. And I'll catch you in the next video. It's Jay the Great signing out. Peace.